Jason, if I'm looking at an apartment that's got, say, 60 years left on the lease, why would I even bother looking at it? Well, um, the lower the lease, then the more money you can make on these sh short lease flats. Yeah. So with a 60 year mortgage or 60 year lease, should I say, um, potentially, depending on where it is in the country, you can make anything from 30 grand upwards in terms of uplift. Right. So like a paper version of the BRR. So um, if that okay. flat was in North London, um, you could probably make around, I don't know, 30 to 50 grand in terms of profit. If that same flat was in prime central London, then you could make six figures worth of profit. So it depends on where you're, where you're buying. But um, the lower the lease, um, the more money you can make out of it. In Why does not everybody do that then? Why does everybody just uh, run a mile as soon as they hear the word short lease? Yeah, it's a lot of, well, it's a lot of paperwork, should I say. Yeah. Now, when you see and, and hear flats, um, people think of service charges every month. I mean, every every year, the annual service charge creeps up by 2%, 3%, mm -hmm. 4%. Um, you have to answer the block management company. You've got the freeholder, where you sometimes have to pay ground rent. Yeah. And then, obviously, when it comes to the lease extension, you've got to pay money towards the lease extension. So there's a lot of people to answer to in terms of um, um, buying flats. Yes. So a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to be held ransom to... Mm -hmm. The block management or the freeholder i just want a house freehold and that, that, and that would be my thinking thing <clears throat> well, on all that hassle yeah we, we've got um, a very f a small number of apartments in our portfolio we've got a small number of apartment blocks but we've got the freehold so then you know I, i'm never really concerned about that yeah but as soon as somebody presents me with an apartment i'm just thinking oh, just, well, <laughs> it's just headache yeah now it's paper version of the brr especially yeah. if you can refurb it and change it from a one bed to a two bed or two right. bed to a three bed and it has a short lease. Yeah. Then one's um, I call a triple threat. Right. And so you, you're, money you're adding value by renovating it. Yeah. You're adding value by reconfiguring it, turning it from one to a two. Yeah. And you're adding value by increasing the, the lease term. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So those ones bring the most money. Yeah. Um, so as you know, you can buy them where they're above shops, um, conversions, where it used mm -hmm. to be a house and convert it into flats, top and bottom floor. Um, you can have purpose-built ones as well. Um, there's so many different ones that, mm -hmm. that you can buy, obviously. But um, with me, <clears throat> the reason why I like flats is because I wanted to leave my full-time job. This is why yes. I liked it. And I couldn't afford to, to buy houses at the time. So I thought, instead of me not doing anything, I thought, right, I used to get myself onto the ladder and then start jumping, jumping, jumping. And then it, it worked out well. So it wasn't a strategy that you specifically went to look and learn about and say, right, shortly, so I'm going to do this. It, it, is it something you kind of stumbled into because you're looking for cheaper end of property? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Basically, it evolved. So I bought a normal flat, um, a conversion. So I just had to pay um, builder's insurance from it. Mm -hmm. There's no service charge. Um, £500 a month um, or £600 a month rent, rental profit that I was making off right. it at the time. And then... Um, the lease on that one, that one I bought in 2001, that's my first ever flat. Okay. I mean, the following year, I extended the lease because yep. the lease was about 82 or 83 years. So it wasn't short, <coughs> short, but you still extended it anyway. Yeah, exactly, because right. it was above 80. Okay. So if it's above 80, it's going to be a lot cheaper than if it's below 80, because 80 is a marriage value. Yeah. Right. So I thought, let me extend it now. While well, it's above 80, it's going to be cheaper. That was the first ever short lease that I did back in 2002. Okay. And then um, I just started, kept on buying, buying, buying. Um, this normal vanilla buy to lets, mm -hmm. then moved over to um, flats with refurbs. Yes. And then um, reconfiguring, so flats with BRR, um, reconfiguring as well. Mm -hmm. One best to two beds, two best to three beds. And then um, stumbled, well, not stumbled, but I thought about our oh, short leases came into afterwards. Yeah. All of these flats have um, leases on them. So eventually, you're going to have to extend the leases. And then it just started to snowball from there. Okay. <clears throat> so um, on average, like I said, if you're making £600 a flat and you have, say, 30 flats there, then that's going to be 18 grand a month mm. that, you're, that you're bringing in, which is good. And on average, where I am, um, if you've got studios, one beds, two beds and three bed flats, um, some it's local authority, some purpose built, some above shops, some conversions. Um, on average, they're between 250 and maybe 300 k so if it's two, if it's like two hundred and fifty in terms of value, and you have thirty flats, then that's seven point five million. Yeah. Um, if the average is about three hundred k, because the three beds are a bit over three hundred k, then thirty times three hundred, that's nine million. So it's a lot numbers. of little's make a lot, yeah. So even though it's a little five hundred pound here, six hundred pound here, you might yeah. think oh, it's not much, but lots of little's make a lot. They add up. I mean, it just grows, 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 yeah. grows. I mean, every so often, 
Like I said, now it's every three, four months. Buy another one, another six hundred pound. Yeah. Buy another one, another six hundred pound. So instead of it being eighteen grand a month, it's eighteen six. Buy another one, another four months, mm -hmm. nineteen two, and then by the end of the year, um, it's nineteen eight, and then so on. So it's just slowly but surely going up and up and up. Yes. So before long, you'll be hitting twenty one, twenty two, twenty three grand a year, just from a simple um strat flat strategy. Yeah, yeah. So even though a lot of people don't like flats. Um, lots of littles do make a lot and you can move forward that way. Yes. So that's how I funded um, in my lifestyle so far. Yeah. So, so, so it works out well. <laughs> and then obviously I'm just, that's just a rental income because I like the cash flow. But if you're talking about taking out lump sums and then moving forward, um, initially that, that was the plan where you refinance. Extract some more equity. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Plus your savings, um, plus your employed income, plus your rental income. And then you move again to get the next one and so on and so on and so on. When it gets to a point where you don't really need to refinance as much or at all. So you can save um, 13 grand a month ish on average, if you're making like 18K a month, you can save like 13K a month. Um, so every three, four months, that's a deposit for another one. For another one, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then just move forward. So that way you keep your gearing low. Yes. Because um, lately, um, the last bank, they said to me, my gear, I'm geared about 49.8%. That's very good. Yeah, so it's a bit under half. So yeah. I've got a lot of equity there, just, just, like, just sitting there. Yeah. So, so I for, could... For someone watching this who may not understand what you mean mm. by that, that means how much debt you have versus the value. So so if something's worth, say, a million pounds, you've got less than half a million of debt on it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So yeah. Um, loan to value, which is good, especially in this market, um, where they assess your whole portfolio before they give you the actual mm -hmm. um, mortgage offers, like stress test it, and so forth, and affordability as well. So, um, yeah, so moving forward, so now it's just save and buy, mm -hmm. save and buy. I mean, over time, obviously the property prices creep up slowly, slowly, slowly. So even though it's about 50% now-ish, that will drop slightly, 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 slightly. I mean, before you know it, you're geared about 40%, yes. 35% and so forth. So it's like a win-win going forward. But initially to scale, you're going to have to refinance mm -hmm. or sell, pull out the equity or sell it, get the equity. I mean, buy the next go one. again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So is this a strategy you think you have <clears throat> time in terms of the market that it, it changes, depending on the, whether the market's strong or quiet, or is it one that all the time? Well, it, in any market. Yeah. Even now, I know some people are struggling with... Um, getting 75% loan to value mortgages. But um, with these ones, because it's below market values, um, the mortgage offers that have been got recently just just, just come through. Yes. Because um, the, that the rental income, when you do a stress test and um, affordability checks, the stress test and the affordability checks are low, um, the gap is wide enough for it. Mm -hmm. So with the normal buy to lets, for example, a lot of them, people got to put down 65% loan to value in order for it to work. Yeah, to especially in the up. high value areas like London. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But for these, it works in any market, in a good market, in this kind of market now. Um, during the credit crunch, it worked, 2007, 2010. Like it works in any market, so I can't complain. Yeah. <laughs>